Hi everyone, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm here to chat with you about all of the books that I read in June, the second half of June. So let's get into it. So I have already done a video about the books that I read in the first half of June. I will link that in the description box below. Um, it's been a really good reading month. I've read so many books. I read eight books in the second half of June. So we're gonna go from my most favorite to my least favorite. It was a good month though, so nothing to complain about really. I'm sorry if you can hear Nora in the background. She's downstairs with Barry and she seems slightly upset. Um, okay, so let's dive into the five star books that I read in the second half of June. The first book that I wanna to talk to you about is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is, I believe, a debut. And yes, it's a debut. And I don't understand how this could be a debut because it was so good. Um, I also think this is really, really important. Um, this is a book about a girl named Vanessa and she's, she's quite young. I think she's 15, um, 15 or 16. And she goes to a private school, like a boarding school and she has a an English teacher there who's male who preys upon her and she ends up being sexually abused by him. She doesn't recognize it at the time as being sexual abuse until many years later, even as an adult because we flash backwards and forwards in time, even in the present day, she is an adult and still has a relationship with him. Um, albeit it is no longer sexual, she still has this relationship with him. This book, I think, is unbelievably important for anyone out there to learn about grooming and what happens with grooming when it comes to sexual abuse. There are so many situations where the victim is um, questioned inappropriately, and kind of blamed. Um, you know, people often ask, like, why did you keep going back to that person then? And why didn't you tell somebody? And all of these things. And for those people, those people need to read My Dark Vanessa because it explains it. It explains how complex it is. It explains how, you know, the the abuser makes the victim feel very special and it, it explains why you want to impress that person. It's, it's such a betrayal. It's, it's such a betrayal um, to these kids who are abused. And I just thought this was so well done. Very uncomfortable. I had to put this down several times because I felt uncomfortable and I felt really angry. Like, um, the, the abuser in here, his name is Jacob Strain, and I think he is my most hated character I've ever read. I really, really hated him for what he did to her and how he manipulated her. It is so easy. Like, think back to yourself. If you are a girl, think back to yourself when you were a teen and how you know, you're just exploring your sexuality. You're thinking of yourself as a sexual being probably for the first time. And I don't know, I was boy crazy. And so this could easily happen. And this does easily happen. And it's very, very um, problematic. And so yes, I think this is an important book for everyone to read. I really do. Five stars all the way. Another book that I gave five stars was The Color Purple by T by Alice Walker. I nearly said it by Tayari Jones, but that's because there's a blurb on the back. <laughs> it's by Alice Walker. Um, 
I've never watched the movie and I've wanted to watch the movie so many times but I always told myself no you need to read the book first and I've done it and now I can go and watch the movie. This is about um, two sisters. Um, you meet Celie and you also meet Nettie and they have had a very difficult upbringing. They have an abusive father and they are essentially split up at one point when Celie um, is married. She's kind of reluctantly married. I don't think she has much choice in the matter. Um, and Celie and Nettie are separated. So we meet Celie at the beginning and it, it's all written in um, letters. And Celie is writing these letters to God and explaining her life and um, the issues that she has going through um, this marriage, going through all of the stuff that she went through with her father, being separated from her sister, all of the people that she meets. And, and then later on in the book, you read letters from Nettie to Celie and her yearning for her sister. And it was so wonderful. This is a book about the celebration of women and women's friendships and sisterhood. And I, the black women in this book were so unbelievable. I loved them all for their own, in their own ways. They're so different from one another, but I just cared about them so much. Um, as you go along, there is a section in here about the color purple, because I was reading it going like, why is this called the color purple? I love it, but I have no idea why it's called the color purple. And I will not spoil that for you guys, but when you get to that section, I implore you not to cry because I bawled like a baby. I bawled like a baby and then I had to like video myself like reading that section to a friend um, and sending it and it just, it was gorgeous. I don't know where to go next with Alice Walker. So if you have read a lot of Alice Walker, I would love to know in the comments below what I should read next because I'm eager. I'm eager, guys. It was so good. Okay, so now we're moving into the four star reads um, that I read in the second half of June. Um, first is White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Um, I'm not going to talk about this too much because I have a whole reading vlog of me reading that, which I will link in the description box below for you guys. Um, White Fragility is uh, it says why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism and it essentially talks about um white supremacy and how it is infused into every aspect of our society how white bias um is everywhere including in the books that we read the movies that we watch it's literally everywhere um, and it's about really confronting yourself and looking within yourself and trying to figure out how you are um, perpetuating racism, whether you know it or not. Like most of the time racism is, is continued and perpetuated because it is systemic. Um, and many people have no idea that they're doing something racist or that they're, um, they're doing anything that would perpetuate that. Um, so it confront, it makes you confront that. I, I really did enjoy it. I am very eager to read a lot more about anti-racism. This was just my first non-fiction book on that. Uh, but I did really enjoy it and I gave it four stars. Again, that whole vlog of me reading it is going to be uh, linked in the description box below. I also read Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. I listened to this on audio because, oh my goodness, she, her books are, are so lyrical that it is almost called for to listen to it on audio. Um, another Brooklyn is another story of black female friendship and we follow a little girl who lives in Brooklyn and it's about her friendships with these other uh, these other girls in her neighborhood and 
they're teens and so they're exploring their own sexuality in them and their own dreams and going from girlhood to womanhood and that transition. And I really did enjoy this. It really is something to listen to on audio. It's super short, um, but really beautifully written and I enjoyed, I enjoyed it a lot. So I gave that one four stars. Um, and then a couple more that were on my July TBR, but I was able to finish them in June. Ha! Is um, Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is chunky. Um, I think I listened to this on audio and I really did enjoy it on audio. Um, I've never read anything by Liz Moore. I have The Unseen World. Is that what it's called? I have that on my shelves. Uh, apparently this is a big um, shift. It's very different from her other work. And this is a crime book essentially. We follow a police detective who's female and she is working in her neighborhood and she is discovering that there is a serial killer killing off women who are drug addicts, women who are prostitutes. And she's terrified because her sister is a drug addict and her sister is a prostitute on the streets and they're kind of estranged. And um, she is terrified that every time she gets a call that there's another dead body, she is going to stumble upon her sister's body. I think this is categorized as a thriller. I would say it's more mystery than thriller. And I would also say this is equal parts mystery as it is family drama. You go back in time to our main character's childhood and her relationship with her sister then. And I think that's so important to see the development of their relationship and also the development of their characters. I so appreciated all of the relationships in here. The relationship between the sister is really important, but also her relationship with her grandmother who raised her, um, her and her sister. Um, the relationships that she gets into like romantically that are super problematic. I thought this was really well written um, and the, the character development development in here I would say is kind of similar in a lot of ways to Karen Slaughter and how you care about the characters in there, how they're completely fleshed out. This was kind of like that um, except not as gritty at all I would say. Um, if you've been afraid of reading a Karen Slaughter but still want that you know um, development of character Long Bright River all the way. It was really, really good. And I think it will sit with me for a long time. I really enjoyed it. So that I gave four stars. And then I just finished Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a story of a, a woman who has become someone who essentially like flips houses. She, she works on houses and designs houses. So in this book, um, our main character, uh, Maggie, her father has died and he's left behind and given to her um, the family home um, that they have only lived in for 20 days because it was haunted and they had to run away basically because it was haunted and terrifying. Um, so you go back and forwards, you read the manuscript that her father wrote, which was this um, ghost story, true ghost story that became a huge hit and like kind of followed her around her whole life. So you read chapters of that and then you read chapters of her going to the home and kind of working on it to try to resell it and get it ready for resale. And it gets exceedingly and more and more creepy as you go along. I in, okay, so I'm still not sure how I feel about it entirely. I nearly gave this three stars, but it's kind of bordering between three and four stars to me, so I'm bumping it up to four. Um, the chapters that her dad wrote that you read in here does read differently than Riley Sager, which is like purposeful like Riley did that on purpose um, and I didn't really love the writing style of the you know true ghost story I got frustrated by it but I liked Maggie's storyline for sure there are a lot of characters in here to follow and keep track of so I think I preferred lock every door in that way because it was unsettling over time 
in a different way to me. I also really struggled with Maggie and her relationship with her parents. She doesn't believe her parents that there was a ghost. Like she doesn't really remember anything about her time in this house. And she just doesn't believe that there is a ghost. And she has a lot of hate for her parents. That seems a little bit much. <laughs> and she actually puts um, her mom in danger, kind of. Um, and I didn't love that. I also struggle because there there is um, a conversation written in a letter. I don't want to give too much away, but there is a letter in here that Maggie's dad writes to her, and there's talking there about his sexual relationship with his with her mother that was really uncomfortable to read. If I'm being honest, I found it really really uncomfortable. I was like, no one would ever do that. Like I would never talk about my sexual relationship with Barry, with Nora, in that crass kind of way. It was weird, um, but it was creepy and I did enjoy that. So if you are someone who is a little bit leery about ghost stories, I would say read this because it was, it was horror and thriller mixed together. I didn't find it overly scary. Like I could go to sleep afterwards, no problem. But I also love horror and love reading horror. So um, yeah, I gave that one four stars. And then I didn't have any more three star reads. I just had two star reads. So let's talk about those. The first two star read was a shocker to me. It's In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is like the most beloved true crime book on the planet. Every other true crime book that is ever written is always comparing itself to In Cold Blood. Um, this follows the murder of the, Cl the Clutter family. And this family um, were all found shot dead. They were shot very close to their faces. Um, and Truman goes to this town um, that it happened in, in 1959 in Kansas. He goes there and interviews a lot of people who knew the Clutter family. And uh, he also interviews, interviews people who knew the killers. Um, I was, honestly, this sounds awful, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I was bored <laughs> reading this. I found there was so much focus on the killers and not nearly enough focus on the Clutter family um, that I, I found it, it was so focused on how the killers got to that point in their lives. I just wanted it to be more about the Clutter family. Um, yeah, it just didn't really work for me and I found myself to be bored a lot. I also found there were a lot of uh, problematic um, wording in here like there's a lot of racist wording in here that was uncomfortable to read um, I don't know when this was written 1965 I don't know I kind of would have expected better by 1965 but it was it was uncomfortable um, it just didn't really work for me yeah so is in cold blood that was shocking to me and then the other book that I gave two stars was the house of whispers by Laura Purcell now I read the silent companions by Laura Purcell and really enjoyed that book um, this book follows a nurse who goes to this home um, where the Pinecraft family lived we follow the nurse taking care of this elderly woman named Louise Pinecroft. And she is, um, sh she's elderly. She doesn't speak a lot. And she kind of just sits and looks at this all of this china on this wall. And it's like this decorative wall. And then she just watches it all day. Um, this book flashes backwards in time to the nurse's personal past. Um, she is an alcoholic and it's about her personal past and kind of screwing things up majorly with the family that she took care of before. Um, I found that whole storyline completely unnecessary. Like it didn't further the story in any way, shape or form. And I don't know why it was in there at all. 
We also flash backwards in time to Louise Pinecroft's, um, not childhood because she was, I think she was in her late teens or early 20s when her, her father and her moved to this um, house on the Cornish coast. It's right by the sea. And um, they have dealt with a lot of loss because of consumption and they bring these um, convicts, basically, they bring them to the house and these convicts live in a cave and the doctor is essentially going to perform um, medical experiments on these, these men to try to fix consumption and try to solve it. But I, there's stuff in here about um, fairies and I didn't know there was going to be stuff about fairies. I don't enjoy fairies. So I, I feel like this might be a book for somebody else, but not me. I didn't really care about the relationship that the family had with any of the convicts and I didn't care about the convicts. I just wanted a lot more from Laura Purcell and it just didn't work for me. But if you like fairies and are scared of fairies, like find that, you know, trope or subgenre interesting, then maybe this would be perfect for you. It just, and I don't care about fairies. So it wasn't for me. So those are all of the books that I read in gym in between books right now but what I am planning on reading next on audio I'm going to read The Hate You Give. Finally I'm the last person on booktube. I know I'm the last person on booktube to read this. Um, the Hate You Give is about I think her name is Star. Yeah and she um, is a black girl living in a poor black neighborhood. Um, she goes to a uh, is it a private school or suburban prep school and she's kind of balancing these two worlds one of her friends is shot by the police and killed and it's about her working through all of the emotions that you would have in that and um, I'm very eager to read this I know I'm the last person to read it but I'm gonna listen to this on audio I'm hoping that it will be good on audio and then I'm about to pick up Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mackay Kendall. And this book is about the feminist movement and the importance of black women in the feminist movement. I am so eager to read this. I am going to get my highlighter out. Um, there are certain books. <coughs> I know this is like the worst news possible to many people out there. Like the idea of highlighting a book would, uh. um, but there are certain nonfiction books that I feel strongly that I need to highlight to learn from. So I, I want to learn from this book, so I'm going to highlight it. And it's a beautiful book too. So um, those are the two books that I'm hoping to get into very soon, maybe even today. Let me know in the comments what was the best book that you read in June. I'd love to know. I hope you had a wonderful reading month. Um, in the description box below, you can check me out on Goodreads. You can check out my Amazon wish list. You can check me out over on Instagram. Um, I also have my Patreon page linked below. We are going to be reading the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vamp Vampires for our summer pick so if you want to join us you can head on over to patreon and check me out uh i think that's it from me i hope you guys are doing well and i'll talk with you soon bye